my output range to be in this particular data set. I'll just do it over here somewhere, okay? My output range is here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit okay. And what we get is we get the output uh, for our independent samples. Sorry, not our independent samples, for our single factor ANOVA, okay? Uh, so let's just walk through this particular table, okay? Uh, it's a single factor ANOVA. We have a summary table here. Uh, the summary table is just providing us with some summary descriptive statistics. Uh, you can see the groups. We have three groups, 20 to 30 year olds, 30 to 40, 40 to 50. We have a count associated with each group. The count representing the number of measurements or how many respondents were in the group. So the 20 to 30 year olds, there was 20 observations. The 30 or 40 year olds, there was 44 observations. The 40 to 50 year olds, there was 18 observations. The next column just giving us the, the sum of all the observations within them particular groups. And then we have the average, okay? So you can actually see that the 20 to 30 year olds, yeah, that the average, I suppose, the average uh, value on the negative acts questionnaire was 1.096 indicating that there probably wasn't any negative acts. These people, the 20 to 30 year olds, didn't feel that there were any negative acts perpetrated on them within their organization. The 30 to 40 year olds is, is slightly bigger, okay? It's 1.48, meaning that there was more negative acts perpetrated on them. And the 40 to 50 year olds had even a bigger average negative acts, okay? So the question being asked when we undertake a single factor ANOVA is, is there evidence to suggest that these averages are different? But more importantly, is there evidence to suggest that any pairing of the groups, for example, the 20 to 30 year olds and the 30 to 40s, or the 20 to 30 year olds and the 40 to 50s, or the 30 to 40s and the 40 to 50s, or right across the three groups, is there evidence to suggest that there's a difference in the average scores? Now, the ANOVA gives us the result of this particular test. Now, actually, there's one particular value that's really important for us, which is the p-value. This is the actual probability of observing these, this particular data set, okay? This data set with these characteristics. So the p-value here is 2.779 e minus 25. Actually, what that represents is 2.779 by 10 to the minus 25. So actually, this p-value here is effectively 0 0.00000. All the way down, there's going to be 24 zeros. Okay, uh, all the way down to 2779, which is effectively zero. Okay, now don't forget the null hypothesis is that there is no difference between the three groups. Okay, the averages of the three groups. The alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference. And we know the little rhyme says that if the p is low, the null must go. What do we mean by low? We mean that if the p-value reported for our test is lower than the significance level that we've set for this particular test, well then we reject the null hypothesis. In this particular case, 2.779 by 10 to the minus 25 is considerably less than 0 0.05, our significance level. And as such, we would reject the null hypothesis in favour of the alternative. And we then could make an inference. And the inference would be that at least one of the pairings of our groups have significantly different averages. Now, we don't know which ones they are, but we know at least one of them have a significantly different average. And that would have to be 2.63 compared to 1.096 at minimum, okay? There could be evidence to suggest that 2.63 is different to this and that 1.48 is different to 1096. But we know that there is at least one difference, okay? So it must be between the 40 to 50 year olds and the 20 to 30 year olds. Actually, what we would really do next is we'd actually do a post hoc test. That's a, a test after we've done the main test to actually ascertain which groups actually are significantly different. Okay? But anyway, for our purposes here, uh, what we know is that there is one group that is different Okay, based on the p-value. Keep in mind, if the p is low, the null must go meaning that if your p-value, the probability of observing the data at hand, okay, is less than your significance level, typically alpha is equal to 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. An alternative approach is to compare the actual F statistic, that's the ratio of the between groups measure and the within groups measure, to compare the F statistic 
to a critical value, okay? Now, in this case here, in when we're doing a critical value appraisal, okay, what we're interested in is observing if the F statistic is bigger than the critical value, we reject the null. In this case here, 125.7985 is considerably bigger than 3.11, and as such, we reject the null hypothesis, okay? Uh, so there's two ways that we can interpret this table. We can interpret it based on p-values, which is the more traditional way, uh, which it was, sorry, the more, I suppose, the, the newer way to do it, okay? Uh, so when we look at p-values, if the p-value is less than our significance level, we reject the null. From a critical value approach, if our test statistic is bigger than our critical value, meaning it's falling out into one of the tails, we also reject the null, okay? So guys, uh, I hope this video was somewhat helpful uh, where we walk through how to undertake a single factor ANOVA in Excel. Uh, so once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and thank you for your time.